Now, we have one pack left, but unfortunately, this company believes discount codes are for peasants, so I won't be able to save you any money on this one. And this is the Shaw Plate Carrier Pack, or I don't know if I can say this, or can I say this on YouTube? P? I think real P may actually be cheaper than this, and I think YouTube's gonna get mad at me for saying P a hundred times. Hey, welcome back my favorite pointy hat spellcasting robe commandos. Today I have one that you guys all voted for and I'm pretty excited to tear into all this and share my thoughts with you. I'm also fairly certain that sharing some of my favorites is gonna make some people angry because they're weirdos on the internet, but I think that's the fun part. Today then we'll be taking a look at my top three plate carrier quick disconnect packs. This is interesting too because my top three favorites all kind of fill the role in a different way instead of being three uh, carbon copies of the same thing. But with these, I'll also throw in some honorable mentions as we go through things, as there's some other really good ones that just didn't make the list, and there's some really bad ones that will never ever make the list. Such as after spending some time with the flat pack and buying and selling it twice now, I'll say that's some total ass when it comes to plate carrier packs. I mean, if you wanna be able to store some pebbles and maybe a Lunchable, it's great. But if you're out of preschool, probably not the best pick for you. Plus it has this backpack configuration with these little tiny straps and this little tiny pack. As a grown man, you look absolutely ridiculous. Trust me, I tried it. I wish I still had it around to show it to you, but I'm not making a third poor life decision. Now, as I said, one interesting thing with all these you're gonna see is that all of these have quick disconnect on them, or they can also turn into a backpack configuration. Well, one of them I kind of cheated on, but I really do think that having a pack that's mollied onto you that you can't take off is, is kind of bad for like a billion reasons. And I really think that quick on, quick off, and self access is a requirement for what I wanna use a backpack for. Operating procedures for teams and military may be wildly different, but here on TLD, we often talk about survival and SHTF scenarios where being able to access your own pack is gonna be far more pivotal. And by myself, having that whole thing stuck to my back isn't gonna help me at all. So these are the packs you can self-access, but then still be able to connect into a plate carrier system. One small thing with this though, you have to be careful about is putting too much weight in some of these packs. Like some of them are big enough where you can overload them. And when you do that, you start to do some silly stuff where your whole plate carrier just wants to come up and choke you and, and you just spend your whole life constantly readjusting your carrier because you loaded up your rear pack too much. And some of these packs are actually limited in size for that exact reason. So you can't overload them and cause some stupid situation because if you can put the space there, people are gonna fill it with dumb stuff. Now, could you just use a backpack, like a regular schmegular backpack? Sure, but I think you're getting into a different mission set where you would probably just want to ditch the QDs for more size and different features and not have to pay extra for some of this feature set. Like stepping up to a full size pack, the Mystery Ranch Day Packs are fantastic and work great with kit, along with the First Spear Exigent Circumstance Pack. So a couple different options, different ways of thinking about things from a full size backpack to these quick disconnect plate carrier packs. But I do wanna say that I do have discount codes for most of the stuff we're showing you down today and I'll put all that down in the description if you're looking to save a little bit of money. YouTube has gone a little bit Karen lately and absolutely loses their mind if you put any sort of discount or anything to do with any sort of firearms company. So I've been putting a link to the Thinline Defense website where it has everything listed, all the links and all the discount codes, most of the gear and stuff we're wearing too, if you ever have questions about that kind of stuff. So make sure to save some money if you're out there shopping. Now with these packs, I didn't really rank these in like a three, two, one order like I normally do, like, hey, this one's the best and one, two, three and all that, because they all kind of fill different mission sets and different roles. I really just picked three, so we weren't here talking about backpacks for an hour but I do have a ton of other ones that I use and that I love. So if there's some that I don't mention that are your favorites, make sure to mention them down in the comments and we can probably put them on a video later on. If you have one I've never heard of, I'll either pick it up or I'll make fun of you. Uh, either way, it's gonna be a good time. All right, so back to it in no particular order like I mentioned. First, let's do the Agilite Micromap and go over all the features of this pack first. 
Yeah, this is the one I totally cheated on because it's technically a Molly connection and I made it QD by using the Javelin panel, but I'll show you all that. I've shown you the micro map before, but in terms of features, it's an extremely low profile rear pack that gives the edge when it comes to being low profile. The front panel has two zipper pockets for smaller items such as tools or batteries, along with an expandable front panel pocket for various different items. Get these other guys out of here. Like you can expand this bottom area to put in like tools or bolt cutters, or I even think I showed you how you could easily put a small weapon configuration in this pocket. I'll throw some B-roll over this part too, but you can also expand this entire pocket out if you wanted to store your whole helmet and use it in this external configuration also. Opening up the main pouch, we see room for a large water bladder along with the left and right side water hose opening that has some smart hose routing around the entire pack. So from water to tools to helmet storage, it's a nice little streamlined solution, but with the Molly connection system, it would probably be a pretty big pain in the ass to get to anything unless you had some sort of team with you. So let me show you how we solve that. To connect this into the carrier, we use the Javelin Concepts detachable grid. The grid gives us a way to connect in a Molly style pack that now has the ability to connect into our plate carrier using the quasim buckles in a more QD style. Here I connected the female quasim buckles into the shoulder straps, but you could also just use G hooks to make it easier to connect into different carriers. The grid system also connects into itself under the carrier, kind of like a belly band. Now that belly band style is a little bit different, but I found it's a lot easier to connect things up. Like it doesn't make such a mess of all your gear on the side of your cummerbund. And I, I thought it was actually a little bit more comfortable and a ton easier to adjust. I'll say that also. Now though, let's move into the next category and look at actual expansion of this and let me show you what it can do. With the streamlined design of the Micromap, you get a low profile form factor where every feature is done well. Add in a water bladder or use a tool pouch or place in a helmet, it all works great while also staying minimal in design. The rear hook and loop could hold a second placard and G-hook it in place if you really needed to. The Micromap doesn't really excel in expansion though and the whole why I like this pack is because it just does that whole streamlined, low profile pack idea so well. Like it fills that minimalistic mission set where I wanna stay streamlined, but maybe I still wanna have some water or an extra mag or some specialty tools with me. This would let me do that while still staying super streamlined and not bringing like a backpack with the whole kitchen sink or a huge two day pack. To me, the Micromap is really that best minimalistic pack that still checks all the boxes that you would want in a plate carrier pack. For price, we're at about $150 for the Micromap pack and I think $80 for the detachable grid. So we're not really in a budget tier, but you get some pretty amazing stuff for the cost. It's also a literal billion times better than its direct competitor of the flat pack. I don't know if you've seen it, but some literal moron designed the front pocket of the flat pack also. So the zipper is actually smaller than the pouch itself. So you can't actually fit things inside of it the size of the actual pouch. I really think that pack is an absolute piece of overpriced shit. Now in no particular order, even though I like DM a whole lot, let's do the next one. And this is the Defense Mechanisms Recondite Pack. I, I've also heard some goofy things where some people refer to this as like a flat pack plus. Um, that's kind of like calling a 2011 just like a Glock plus. It's, it's kind of weird and I don't think it's very accurate. So let's tear into it and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Now I've shown you this recondite before, but there's been some cool upgrades. Along the top of the recondite is access to an internal mesh zippered pocket. Below that is a large loop panel that allows you to connect in various agency markers or expand it out to attach mission specific placards. I'll show you all that in a moment, it's pretty awesome. Then we have a large pocket that, oh my word, has a zipper all the way around so you can actually use the full pocket. This is wild, I know. The bottom of the front also has a zippered opening to another internal mesh pouch. Along the outside, we see a zipper that travels all the way around, allowing you to open the pack partially to just access smaller items or flay it open completely, revealing integrated individual mesh pockets all along the inside for organizing. You see two things here. Uh, number one, why having this molly to your back would be such a problem, particularly if it's filled with medical gear that you need to access. Two, you see the individual pockets are included, which is actually pretty rare nowadays where there's so many other gear companies that treat your wallet like an untapped government contract. 
Along the inside, we also see a reversed zipper that is designed that way to store your water bladder, an internal hook and loop clasp to hold the water bag in place, and a centralized exit hole for your water hose for righties or lefties. I'm really looking forward to when we get to expansion because this thing gets absolutely crazy, and it's one of the reasons why it's on this list, because I really think the DM Recondite Pack is the most versatile pack of all the ones I have today. First though, before expansion, let's try to stay in line with what we're doing. Let's look at connection to the plate carrier. On the rear of the recondite, we see a few options here, as there is a standard legacy mollies for my guys still fighting in Vietnam, but the recondite also has loops along the side, an optional recondite strap kit on the DM site. The strap kit allows us to connect in whatever hardware we want or just swap it out. Here I went with the G hooks because it's easier and more universal, and then along the bottom, I used the quasms to connect into the side of a Molly cummerbund. Being able to use whatever buckles I want and then be able to swap them out between male or female quasms is part of what makes this pack so stupidly versatile because I can integrate it into just about anything. You could also use the Molly on the rear if you wanted to relive your G-Watt days and put on some M81. I mean, it's nice that it's included, but it's just not ideal for what I would use this for. For even more options, there's also backpack straps on the DM website if you wanted to just run this in a pure backpack configuration. I know I have those backpack straps and they're awesome. I just have no idea where I put them. I'm sure it's somewhere super smart. But what's cool about this and how versatile it is is you could have this whole crazy specialized medical configuration that you could put on your plate carrier, but then just reconfigure it and use the whole same setup as an everyday backpack. I know I keep repeating versatile, but that's why it's on this list and it absolutely nails it. Now let's look into expansion and I absolutely love this part for this pack. Here the recondite shines as it can transform into pretty much any mission roll. With built-in pockets along the inside, we can organize a full array of medical items for a medical roll, add in additional mags, oh the 29 round mags for YouTube of course, or just extra equipment such as maps, batteries, compass, or just hold a padded night vision case. We can add in water easily without interfering with our internal organization, along with doing some crazy stuff on the front. Here the front hook and loop allows us to connect in various placards and secure them in place with the placard wrap. What then adds to the whole thing is the whole DM placard is customizable also. So you could have a setup like I have here with a mag and a tool pouch and just some admin stuff, or you could change this whole thing out to have bangs or extra magazines, just a ton of mags. Whatever you need for your mission set, you could change this piece out to make the whole thing even more crazy. So the expansion of the recondite is really one of my favorite bits because you could just load this whole thing out to have this whole specialized roll pack or just run it in a minimized configuration, just throw some water in it and some extra medical. It's whatever you wanna do. Having an internal organization built in means you can load everything up or run it streamlined and out of the way, giving you both an expanded or minimalist configuration. It just does everything so well and the fact that the internal organization is included means you don't have to drain your wallet just to make it functional. Speaking of wallets, let's talk about price then. I believe the price of the base recondite pack is 145 and then the strap kit I believe is 130. So at 175, you're getting a pretty crazy pack that's already ready to go. Now we do have discount codes for both the Agilite and the DM packs, the TLDCO. So you can actually save a little bit more than the price I told you. Now we have one pack left, but unfortunately this company believes discount codes are for peasants. So I won't be able to save you any money on this one. And this is the Shaw plate carrier pack, or I don't know if I can say this, or can I say this on YouTube? P, P? I think real P, P may actually be cheaper than this. And I think YouTube's gonna get mad at me for saying P a P hundred times. The uh, Shaw pack deviates from the other packs to straddle the gap between a plate carrier pack and a full featured backpack. Along the outside, we have a Velcro panel for patches and goodies, along with another, oh, gasp, functional upper pocket with nice expansion with loop Velcro inside, along with a larger lower pocket with the same loop backing. And yeah, much like the Recondite, we can do some really cool stuff in terms of expansion. Uh, I'll show you. Along the outside, we also see removable compression straps if you wanted added security for your gear, or you can remove these if you need quick access to things like medical equipment. 
We see on the side there are two molly slots running down, so you could add in mags or pouches, and I've often connected in a small tripod in this configuration. The top of the Shaw Pack also has this G-hook. This is designed to hold larger breaching tools and keeping them from falling out. Much like DM, the Plate Carrier Pack has a zipper that travels the entire length of the bag, allowing the pack to be partially opened or flayed open completely. Inside, we see loop panels on either side of the bag that we could use to add in additional internal organization. Kind of frustratingly, this pack doesn't come with, nor does Shaw sell any sort of internal organization pouches, so you have to go and source those all yourself. Yay! But I have some examples to show you when we get to expansion. The rear pocket also has a space to add in your water bladder, along with a tab to actually hold your bladder in place. You probably need to buy a carabiner or something separately here. I didn't even realize there's not really a way to connect your water bladder in. I guess you could maybe use paracord or something. Why of all the places did they cheap out here? Moving to the top of the Shaw Pack is a basic webbing handle also, and a hydration hose zipper that you can lock in place by hooking the tab under one side to keep it from moving out of position. Now looking at the features of this pack, there's a whole lot of things packed in here and a ton of different options, but frustratingly, there is also a lot of stuff you have to buy later to make it fully functional. I'll show you on the expansion side of things because if you actually have all the different parts you need, it's pretty cool when it all works together. But first, let me show you the whole plate carrier connection system. Here we see how the plate carrier pack is designed more like a full featured backpack with a more standard padded backing. The shoulder straps also use a rifle sling design with a standard quasim buckle. The pack includes quick disconnect male quasim tabs that can be added to your gear, along with these molly connectors to give you a loop to connect into if it's not normally available. Shaw has a more backpack style design, but you can't actually swap out this quasim buckle to anything else because it's sewn down. So I did have good luck in connecting this into most carriers, but because I can't change this out to make it female or to G-hooks, I just found connecting this into other systems wasn't quite as versatile as some of the other packs that I've shown you. The plate carrier pack connects in by hooking in the top female quasim buckles into the one we installed on the shoulder strap, and then securing the side quasim buckle into the cummerbund. The idea with all these packs is that you can just disconnect one full side, rotate it over so you can access things and then reconnect. I've shown you some other times where you can actually you know, pull the pack over your head and that works, but not if you have a helmet on, particularly with a plate carrier with some super narrow straps, it works a lot better to just come from the side and access everything. All right, so this next part's gonna get expensive. Let's move to expansion. Starting with just a water bladder, we can instead add in the tool insert and be able to add in large breaching tools with the G-hook to hold them in place. Shaw does sell a pretty fancy breaching tool insert, like this huge whole Tegra sheet, and it's actually surprisingly fairly priced at like 20 bucks, which is kind of wild that this whole huge sheet is like $20, but then Axel will charge you like 80 bucks for this little headset tab. I just love that, guys. No, no I don't. Sorry, trying to get back to it. Now, we can also use the external pouches to add in mag sleeves. Here I threw in a 308 two mag sleeve into this top slot and then used the Shaw three mag placard into the larger pocket to make these easily retrievable to restock your main kit. Along the inside, we can also open this up and add in specialized organization pouches for various kit or medical equipment. Here I added in some pouches from my Mystery Ranch Rats pack that I usually use for my range trips, along with some other medical kits. The bag is also large enough to throw in bigger equipment such as a bivy, a poncho, or maybe even a sleeping bag. Since the Shaw pack is walking that line between a plate carrier pack and a full featured backpack, you can consider some of those larger items, and it's why I consider it one of my favorites because I think it's one of the most capable plate carrier packs on the market. Now you also have to remember not to load it up too much because it's connected into your plate carrier and it's gonna move the whole center of gravity and make your whole plate carrier do stupid things. But even thinking about that, kind of my use case for the plate carrier pack is that like 24 hour, like 24 hour assault roll. Like if we needed to stay the night somewhere but I still need to bring a whole bunch of extra equipment and then still be able to ditch it if I needed to move extremely quickly. And the Shaw Pack just does really well with its ability to expand and adapt with its larger size to give you a purpose roll medical pack or an assault pack without all the bulk. 
The plate carrier pack also works great as just a backpack. And it's interesting in the designs as the plate carrier pack is more of a backpack that can connect into your carrier where all the others seem to be designed the other way around where they're actual plate carrier packs that can also be turned into backpacks. So just if you're looking at all the different ones, the Shaw pack just looks at the design a little bit backwards, focuses more on the backpack side. Now, looking at price, the plate carrier pack is definitely the most expensive in the bunch at $275. My challenge with the Shaw Pack is that I like it a lot, but at the price and functionality is like just a regular dedicated 24 hour or 48 hour backpack, just a smarter option. I'd honestly love to try the Exigent Circumstance Pack or even the Mystery Ranch 48 hour pack to see if they serve the same role better at relatively the same cost. It would just be interesting to see how an assault pack compares and if that's an actual smarter option when you begin to add in a substantial amount of gear. Now for one honorable mention, I've also showed you the Agilite AMAP3 a bunch where we see that larger day pack functionality that can also hook into your carrier for almost half the cost of the Shaw option. The AMAP3 doesn't have the quick disconnect functionality but you can still hook it into your plate carrier. But if you're looking for just a full featured like day pack, this thing does great. And I used it for about two years for all the SEER training that we did out in the field. And yeah, it just did phenomenally. Plus it's fairly inexpensive in comparison. So you won't get all mad when it's super gross from being in a lake all day from water survival. Not gonna lie to you, this thing smells, it smells pretty bad. But that's it with my top three plate carrier packs with the uh, Agilite Micromap as my favorite, my most minimalist, the DM Recondite for the most versatile, and then we have our Shaw Plate Care Pack as my most capable. Hopefully this video was helpful for you in your purchasing decisions to see all the different features of the different packs that are on the market so you can find one that fits your mission set while still staying within your budget. And I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon and YouTube members. You make it possible to test all this gear, show it all off to you and see what's worth your money. And we have this great community that I'm just excited to be part of. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what your three plate carrier packs are or your three favorite day packs. I wanna hear about it. Maybe we'll test them all out. All right, everyone, Walsh out. So this is what you guys wanted. You guys voted for this. Uh, I think some of the other things that were in that vote was like the Rovi Vaughn. Um, and I think there was something about tripods. So I got some other cool stuff I'm working on for you. I'll go through the rest of that list. Uh, the Rovi Vaughn is like a, a smaller IR illuminator, kind of like for a pistol. But I think it would be cooler. I think on a pistol would be silly. I think it would be really cool on like a PCC. So maybe I'll walk down that road, see if it actually functions in that capacity because putting a D-ball or something on something like that would be super dumb. So maybe that would work in like a home defense scenario. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just gonna make some things up. But it is, it is ungodly hot out here. Uh, so it's fantastic. I'm gonna get out of here. It's yuck, I'm warm. I don't have anything else for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bye.